Good morning, I'm Will from Sterling Power. Today we're going to be going through the battery to battery variants, both the 30 and the 60, and to try and find out how to do a, a proper reset um, to get the unit to come back on if the unit has accidentally been turned onto its off mode or for any other settings which you're not happy about. What we're going to do, we're just going to take you through the procedure on how to completely start from scratch. Okay, right, so this is this unit which is currently working uh, quite nicely. What we're going to do is I'm just going to check the input voltage here. Okay, the input voltage what we're seeing is 13.8 uh, volts, so it's just under 14. So that's kind of what we would expect to see when your engine is running. Okay, and obviously that everything's built up. Okay, so um, what we will do as well is that we'll drop the voltage down just obviously to emulate the Euro 6 um, sort of voltages that you're most likely to see. Okay, so the common sort of um, thing that I think that what people are doing with these units is that they are accidentally putting the unit into off mode. Okay, if we have a look at the breakdown sheet here, we'll see that actually um, if you put, push both of the setup and select buttons down together for 5 to 10 seconds, it toggles the unit off. Okay, uh, and obviously to toggle the unit back on, then obviously I'm going to show you the, the correct process of doing it, okay? But if you're doing it just as when you're setting up the, the unit for the first time, you have got a window of opportunity to, to return the units on a lot easier, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate that, you know, we wanted to obviously to select the battery type select, okay? But obviously what we've done instead is we've accidentally turned the units off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, the buttons down. You'll notice when I hold the buttons down, the buttons flash. Okay, you can count them as seconds as well. Okay, so that might make it a lot more easier, a lot more um, sort of, um, you know, you're not then just relying on yourself to, to count the seconds. You can just look at the unit so you know exactly what it's doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this unit accidentally off. And to do that, I'm going to push down for about seven seconds. Okay. Okay, so now what you'll notice is that um, if it's the unit's now going to be flashing on a little light at the top corner. That's going to be called standby mode, okay? If you've done this on first setup accidentally, okay, you'll notice that we've still got the blue LEDs lit underneath the, um, the setup enter and select button, okay? When these are active, when those lights are, are on, it means that the unit is actually still waiting for another command, okay? So if you've just installed this unit and you're obviously you've accidentally done this, don't panic. All you have to do is then re-push them down again for another seven flashes and then the unit will resume what it's what it's doing okay it'll it'll turn back on okay however if this has been done what will happen is is that when this unit's been turned off the microprocessor will go into its sleep mode what that means is obviously at that point it's drawing extremely low currents okay so the buttons um, and the LEDs behind them will turn off so this is the next plan what we're going to do is that we're going to turn this unit off we're going to wait for the micro, it's about five minutes, I think it is, something like that, for the, um, for the LEDs to, to stop illuminating. And then we're going to get the unit to, to come back on and being able to being, come out of, um, out of its sort of off state. Okay, we're going to first try it doing um, just by literally just turning the unit back on. And then after that, we're going to simulate that something's gone wrong. Okay, so then we're going to do a complete factory reset on the unit. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the units off Okay, so that's the unit off. The, um, that little blue LED is gonna flicker every now and again. Okay, we're just gonna wait for about five minutes or so, make sure the unit is completely to sleep, and, uh, and then we're going to go through the procedure to then get the units back up and running. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, we've left this unit for about five minutes or so. The, uh, every light's gone out. Okay, it's now on a standby sort of, um, sort of mode. So the voltage that we've got on this unit should be about 12 volts input. Okay, this is what you'd normally see. So yeah, I don't know if just about to see that we're about 12.03 volts, okay? So what I'm going to go through, there's a couple of ways to get this unit to reactivate. 
to a point where you buy, we can either turn the unit on or off or that we can do a factory reset, okay? So the first method is actually, um, could be quite a simple method. If you've already got a mains battery charger um, hanging around or installed onto the vehicle, um, what we would do is that we would increase the voltage up to about 14 volts, okay? So what I'm going to do on my power supply, I'm just gonna turn it up to uh, 14 volts, okay? I'll show you on the, uh, the meter now, so if you can see that now, we're at 14 volts. Okay, so what that'll do is that if we then press down these buttons, what'll happen is, is that the microprocessor will be able to pick up, okay? So you see when it flashed blue, it's gone, oh, we've got buttons selected. At that point, these buttons become illuminated. What that means is that these buttons are awaiting a next instruction, okay? So what we can do then is that we can either hold them down to um, toggle the unit back on, okay? Because at this moment, it's still off or we can do a factory reset, which will obviously go back you know, completely to the start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hold them down for 32 seconds, okay? And we're going to do a factory reset on that, okay? So 32 flashes as well, it might be easier, so you should be able to see them flash. Here we go, let's try it now. Okay, so now we've got both the alternate banks flashing. That means it's ready to be accepted. So we're going to hold down for another two seconds. Okay, so now we've got three green LEDs per bank that's flashing at us. That means that it's been successful, okay? That we have been able to do a factory reset. What's gonna happen now is that the unit is going to restart. You'll hear the fan start up, it's a little beep. It's going to tell us that it's been now back set to sealed battery type and then hopefully now in a little bit, it's just all gonna start going back to life and, uh, and start producing outputs, okay? So if we get our voltmeter, we have got, so if we go from the middle one, which is our negative, so we've got 13.8 coming in, probably just the volt drop down our little thin cable, okay? And on the output, we have 14.36, we'll call it 14.4, it's near enough, okay? So that's now turned this unit back to a functioning state. Now. There is another way, if you cannot get your voltage to come up to um, 14 volts input or there, thereabouts, okay? The other way of doing it with this unit is to take off the negative, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the unit back to an off state. So I'm just going to um, turn it off here. Six, seven, right, okay, so that's now turned this unit off. Okay, I'm going to um, drop the voltage back down to, to 12 volts. Okay, what that's going to say is that, you know, you're, you haven't got any other methods of getting this, um, you know, the input higher. Okay, so what we'll do now is we've got a, a few more minutes to wait. Okay, so obviously the, uh, the timer built on stays on just for a little bit, just to give you a chance to then, you know, to, to actually set the unit. So we'll wait until these blue LEDs are now um, off. Okay, and then we will show you the other way of trying to activate this unit so that obviously we can do either a full factory reset or toggle the unit on or off. Okay, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so this is the unit again. Once again, it's on to its um, off standby mode. And um, we're going to simulate that we're not able to have a higher voltage coming into it. Okay, and so we're going to have a voltage of and a little bit okay that's our input voltage so what we're going to do this time round is that we're actually going to remove the negative from the actual unit um, use a little bit of link wire to discharge the capacitors okay what that's going to do is just speed things up you don't have to, to um, use link wire to discharge them but you will have to wait uh, five minutes or so to let them naturally degrade down okay so what we're going to do is that we're going to remove the negative Okay, I'm going to put it, put the negative quite far down on the screw so that when we reattach it, then it should be a bit easier so that the slot should be free to be able to put the negative in. Right, so we've uh, removed the negative. 
what I'm going to do is use the link wire here. I'm just going to go over the top. Okay, so over the top of these two, you will probably see a spark, which is quite normal. Okay, so just as a, a word of caution, make sure you have definitely removed the negative before you use the link wire. Okay, otherwise you'll be shorting your battery out and we don't want that. So basically, so what we've done is we've just popped this bit of link over the, uh, between the negative and the input and then a negative on, on the output. And the unit there is completely, you know, it, it, all of the capacitance is, is discharged. So now we're going to reattach our negative. Once again, when you do this, you might find that there's a small bit of uh, a spark going on when you reattach it. Okay, so we won't be, uh, so we'll just put that in and uh, as I say, you might see a small little bit of a spark, but don't worry about it. There we go, so only a small one. Now, the unit becomes active. Okay, so if I can get my, there we go. So what you'll see now is that we're showing sealed and the battery um, selection is on. Now, at this point, these, uh, these buttons are illuminated. It's telling us that the standby is on. Now we can go ahead and press them down for the, uh, for the 32 seconds to be able to perform a factory reset. Okay, so as we were before, we've got both banks flashing, so we're just going to hold both buttons down for a further two seconds. Okay, and it's confirming it with the three green LEDs per bank. And now what should happen is it should go through its startup sequence and um, you're ready to go again. Just as a word of um, sort of caution, if you like, what this does, it, it, it will completely remove any custom settings that you have done to the unit. Okay, so if you have done a custom setting on it, then of course you will need to then redo that custom setting. It is just worth mentioning though, um, at that stage, you can also try and um, pop it on to, uh, obviously if you've turned the unit off, you can try and just turn the unit back on, but it's, to be honest, it's easier, it's more reliable if you just push the both buttons down for 32, do a complete factory reset, and then you know that um, you know, the unit should fire up and behave as it is out of the box from us. Okay, so that's the, uh, the testing of this unit. Um, as, I say, it's, if, as long as you follow that procedure with those times, you shouldn't have a problem. Bear in mind that the, the buttons are timed, Okay, so uh, once we've reactivated the unit, if you don't come back to it within, I think it's about 30 seconds to a minute, the, the blue illumination behind the LEDs will go, and then obviously you'd need to redo the, um, you know, the reactivation of the unit, so either removing the link or increasing the voltage up to about 14 volts. Okay, and so what this unit's doing is it's just going through its uh, startup sort of timer, if you like, so it's just trying to put a little bit of power Although because we're at 12 volts, it'll turn off um, fairly quickly because it's too low below the threshold. But the unit is doing, um, it's about 12 volts in, hence the red flashing light. And it's producing between 14.2 and 14.6. So I would say that's quite happily 14.4 output. And um, so it's all doing as it should. Thank you for watching this video. Um, we really hope it's been some help for you. Um, if you've got any more queries, you're more than uh, welcome to phone in or email. You'll find all the information in the link. But um, as I say, that should hopefully get you out and uh, you know, get the unit back up and running as it should be. Thank you. Bye-bye.